So this is a quick demonstration of how to do the Varroa sugar shake method. Uh, in my opinion, it's the most accurate and most useful tool for evaluating how much Varroa you have in your hive and uh, then be armed with what that information you know if you need to treat or not. So the um, important thing to start with is you take bees uh, from brood frames. You want the uh, newly emerged or the bees that are hanging around the brood because they're the ones that are going to have the uh, a high percentage of varroa and you're consistent then um, with the bees that you sample with. Uh, when we do this method there will be um, you won't harm the queen. If the queen's on the brood frame uh, you won't harm the queen um, but just to be safe uh, it's best to check to make sure she isn't there. Um, once you've done that, it's a simple matter of the tapping the brood frame into the box or into the bucket and um, you have your bees. Uh, one brood frame normally does enough. Uh, it's okay to let bees fly off because they're the foragers. You want them less than the bees that are working on the brood the whole time. Uh, give the bucket a good tap and uh, tap your bees into your shaker. Um, ideally, I would have left the cover board off there so the bees that fell off uh, that didn't fall into the shaker fell back into the hive. Once you have your bees in the shaker, put the lid in, give it a good tap, and to make sure that it lines up with the, um, uh, with the with the line that you've already marked earlier. Um, that's a line that's created by getting 100 mils of water, pouring it into the shaker, and uh, marking the line, the water, the top of the water line. 100 mils of water is equal to, or 100 mils uh, of bees is equal to 300 bees, and that's an important number you need to work with to be accurate between hives and for general consistency. So you're tapping your bees, making sure that they, when they tap down, they, they, they are at the line you've already marked. If not, you can open a little bit, let some fly out. It's easier to put more bees in, let them fly out, than it is to put too few bees in and add more in later on. So once you have your bees in there, put the lid on, the mesh lid on, and add in two tablespoons approximately of icing sugar. Um, the icing sugar will basically, the mites will uh, not be able to hold on to the bees with the icing sugar, and they'll fall off. And what we're going to do then later on is shake the, uh, this, th th this over bucket of water and the icing sugar, and mites will fall out of the bucket. So you get all your sugar into uh, your shaker and you roll around and make, make sure the bees are coated with uh, the sugar. Once you have that done, uh, you can then leave it aside for five minutes. Don't leave it in the heat because it'll get too hot. But basically leave it aside for five minutes for the bees to work the um, uh, icing sugar in amongst their segments and for the mites to fall off. So five minutes later, uh, give it another quick roll there to make sure the bees are all well coated in the, in the sugar. And then basically you're going to start shaking. Uh, you're shaking the bees upside down in the shaker to, so that the icing sugar and the mites fall out of the uh, shaker into the bucket of water. Um, do it low enough and close enough to the bucket so the wind doesn't catch the both the icing sugar and the mites and blow them away. And a white bucket's handiest because you can see the mites. So what will happen immediately is the icing sugar will immediately uh, dissolve and disappear and the mites will immediately float and they're very easy to see in a white bucket. They'll float to the surface and you can count them very easily afterwards. So you do this for about a minute. <coughs> if there's no more mites falling out for about a minute, you can stop. But if there's mites still falling, you keep going until all the mites fall out. Uh, a handy way of speeding things up on this is it doesn't take long once you get used to it but uh, to speed up as well as to use two shakers so you can be preparing one while the other one is sitting for five minutes um, for the um, uh, on its side or sitting sitting for five five minutes So once you've done this, uh, you've got your, your mites floating on the surface, you've shaken your bees, you can then take off the crown board and pour the mites back into the hive. Um, they'll go straight back in, they'll be cleaned up straight away. Some of them fly off, you see they have these ghost bees flying around for a while, and you'll see them actually in other hives uh, as you go along. So as I said, when you're looking at the bucket, the um, 
icing sugar will dissolve and the mites, as you can see here, will float the surface. They're very easy to see and very easy to count. And that's what you want to do. You want to count your mites. As a good rule of thumb, to keep it very simple, if you have three mites or more in the autumn, you should be treating your bees for varroa. Uh, there's a more complicated example is as follows. If you say you found six mites in there, there'd be six mites and 300 bees. And what you would do then is uh, divide that six, your number of mites you found by three and multiply it by two. Um, you multiply it by two if there's brew. If there isn't brew, you don't multiply it by two. So in this case here, we have four percent. Uh, six mites gives you a four percent mite infestation rate. In summary, uh, if you find two percent uh, under two percent, you don't need to treat. That means if you find two mites or less, you probably don't need to treat. And if you find three mites or more, you probably do need to treat. Thank you.